Anyway, Chris, Colin, welcome to Fright Fest. Thank you. Great to have you here with your film, now, The Moor. I don't get me to say it, you know you're going to laugh at me. The Moor. The Moor. I've been the saying more. The Moor. Uh, we well, see in Scotland, we say it's The Moor. So ah. that's, that's why I've, I've been saying it on. I've been continually getting corrected about it. So it's The Moor. No, well, it's still not right. No, I, I get corrected in Yorkshire. Uh -huh. So we've got no chance. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway. You have a film in Fright Fest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's your first feature. De debut feature, yeah. And you, you were telling me that you, it was kind of a, um, a, a product. I've got a lot of years' work. Four years, did you say? Three, three, three a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with original idea, because it's a kind of true life, true horror, uh, no, true, not true, true crime, a true, true crime thriller. Is that? In a way, it was... It was Obviously, the writer came up with the idea, uh, and we connected on the material based on the fact we're both from Huddersfield. Mm -hmm. So, where we where, from our house windows, we could see the moor, the moor. <laughs> yeah, we could see the moors. And as kids, you don't really get the full explanation of why they're bad, but we just got the sense that our parents didn't like it, mm -hmm. and it was a bad place to go. And a childhood imagination, you start to fill in the blanks. And one of the things me and Paul Thomas, the writer, connected on was we kind of inadvertently created our own boogeyman. And that's kind of what we did with this film. That was the starting point. Mm -hmm. we, we wanted to go back to that feeling. And I'm a massive fan of Eldritch locations. And the, the more it's kind of primed for that, considering its history. I think people are really interested in the last 60 years. But when you really delve into it, there's thousands of years of history of sacrifices. You know, the Standing Stones of Ilkley, the Lindau Man in Cheshire. It's, it's kind of primed for horror content in a way, good or bad. Mm. So that was one of the influences to keep it grounded because we wanted to have this dissension into horror. And so, yeah, obviously it started with that kind of true crime influence to begin with, but it kind of mm. leaves it mm -hmm. pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, and um, one thing that impressed me when I first saw it was the quality of the cast. What was the thinking behind who you had in it? Massive, it was huge, because it sounds weird, but you, we always talk budgets when you first feature film and all that kind of stuff. And it doesn't cost you too much more to get a really good cast. It's, it's cheaper than special effects, all this kind of stuff. So we were like, this is a very, it's got a lot of dialogue in it. Mm -hmm. And if the performances can capture you, then we've got something. So casting was very important for us. Um, we wanted to not make it too exclusively Yorkshire. So Sophia Laporte is London based. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, but David is from Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and after that, it didn't really matter as long as they were British, I guess. Bernard Hill, nice. Oh yeah, that was an exciting prospect. So we were looking at looking at um, alumni northerners, actors, and weirdly enough, Bernard Hill didn't come th first to our imagination. Uh -huh. It was obviously Sean Beans, those type of guys, because he's a proud Sheffield man. And when we realised he's a Manchester guy through and through back in the day, mm -hmm. he lived close to where David uh, David Edward Robertson lives now. Uh -huh. And so we reached out pretty quickly. And I didn't ask him to do a Yorkshire accent. And he came in and creeped me out with the Yorkshire accent. accent. Oh. Yeah, he's pretty pitch perfect, to be honest. It's like an RP Yorkshire. Okay. And he lost that years ago. So days on set, 19, 20, 30? For the film? Yeah. It was a five-week shoot. Five weeks, yeah. So what we did is, because we, we were independent, low budget, we wanted to make sure people had the weekends. We were very faci we facilitated people who had commitments. And we just booked out those, I think it was four weeks, actually, sorry. Mm. And then we took a long hiatus and then we shot for a week in and around the moors because there was a lot of rules and regulations we needed to mm. follow for that. So slow shoot, that's, that's quite a nice chunk of time to shoot something, but it was mostly just to fit the puzzle pieces to be able mm. to achieve everything. Okay. So we're filming this 40 minutes before the actual screening. Yeah. And uh, how are you feeling? <laughs> 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 I'm feeling this is actually a really good distraction. I think if I was waiting in the wings watching people gather, I think that would be far worse. I, I'd rather be sat here talking to you. Oh, good. Well, that's nice. That's yeah. a relief. Um, where do you go next? I didn't. I know there's plans, but mm. we're just really happy to be at Fright Fest. Um, that was a massive achievement for this film. It, it justified it. Um, and then we're just, we just want to know if it's going to be international. So we've got plans for UK, obviously, but we want to make sure that it can settle overseas as well, because obviously it's been, I didn't know it was a folk horror, but it is essentially a folk, folk horror. horror. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
we want to see how the England respond to it, or the UK, sorry, and then see how it travels overseas. Because I always pictured it, we've talked off camera about the opening sequence, yeah. and I relate it more to Stephen King's settings, all his stories in Maine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why can't we do the same with Yorkshire? No um, reason at all. You've got, you have the, uh, the scenery, yep. uh, you have the history, you have the, uh, the, um, the buildings, everything. No, it, it's, I, I, nothing that has to be set in London every, all the time. It's yeah. great that films are made outside. And you know, you were, the, um, there seems to be a, a community gradually building up of filmmakers based loosely in the north, North Sheffield, York, yeah. and Manchester. I think it's because it's relatively new that there's an interest up there for mm -hmm. us. Like I think we're kind of, we, we had to create our own opportunities, um, but it's nice that we're starting to get a bit of attention. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think we, we're all homegrown people. We, we, like, I, I know there's like boroughs of different communities. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, I used to be in and from Leeds to Manchester was my kind of upbringing as a filmmaker community type mm -hmm. thing. I used to hang out a lot of film festivals and film, local film screenings in Manchester. But yeah, we're hungry, man. We're up there and we're hungry. <laughs> well, good. I'm sure the screening's going to go well. We've got a big audience. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, Fry Fest. Yeah, so um, more soon or more later, as we say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I, I, you know, you've been really cool about this movie, and it's 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 meant a lot. Good. Mm. I'm delighted to to be able to include it. Genuinely, mm. it's uh, it deserves its slot. Thank you. Mm.